Let's talk about dependency injection. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jono. If you guys are new here, this channel is all about coding. So if you like that stuff, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and check out some more videos. Let's get into it. So what are we gonna be covering in this video? Well, we're gonna be covering dependency injection and also inversion of control. When people start talking about dependency injection, they also start bringing in concepts from inversion of control. So I'm gonna put them in one bucket just for the simplicity of this video. So what is dependency injection? The most basic definition for dependency injection is passing an object its properties. There's different types of dependency injection. We have constructor injection, property injection, and method injection. The most common, most widely used is constructor injection. So we're gonna be focusing on this one for this video. So let's take a look at an example. So in our non-dependency injection example, you can see our service has a constructor and in that, inside that constructor, it's actually creating our database. So the only difference is our service has a constructor, but that constructor now takes in a parameter of our database. And that database is then initialized from the parameter. And that's it for dependency injection. It's not complicated, it's not that hard. All it really is, is passing an object its properties, and that's it. So now let's talk about inversion of control. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated and it's probably gonna require a little bit more explanation, so bear with me. So what is inversion of control? My best explanation is the process of creating objects and all of its dependencies. So let me give you an example. So let's say we have a box, and this box is special and it knows how to do some complicated things. And we add our objects to this box. So we add our service and we add our database from our previous example. Now, we actually ask the box to say, hey, I want my service, please. Can you give me my service? And this box, since it knows some special stuff and it knows some complicated things, it knows that service actually depends on database. So when it gives you the service, it will also give you its database as well. So it will create the object for you with all of its dependencies. And that's the basis of inversion of control. It's pretty much just saying, hey, I want this object give me my object with all of my dependencies all already created and do that for each dependency and so on and so on. So that's the real basic explanation of inversion of control. But now we also have some more advanced features such as lifetimes. So now let's look at lifetimes. And this is probably best explained with an example. So bear with me. So we have three different lifetimes. We have transient, scoped, and singleton. So let's start with transient lifetime. So let's say our service was registered as a transient. What that means is every single time I ask my box, hey, can you please give me back my service? It will give you a brand new instance of, of the service every single time you ask for it. Next, we have scoped. So probably best to explain what a scope is. I like to think of a scope as like a period of time that something should exist. So for example, I like to think of a HTTP request. So the request comes in and the request goes out. That time period of the request coming in and the request coming out that is the scope. And what this actually means is, let's go back to our box example. If I ask my, my box, hey, can you please give me my service while inside of a scope, it will give me the same instance of service throughout the entire scope. If I ask the box for my service three times within a scope, those three times, I will have the exact same instance of my service. And finally, we have singleton. So hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory because we have the singleton pattern. And essentially what this means is that there will be a single instance of an object throughout the entire application. So if we go to our box example again, if I register service as a singleton, every single time I ask for, for my service from the box, it will give me the exact same instance every single time. So now that you know about dependency injection and inversion of control, let's talk about why these things are useful. So probably one of the most useful things about dependency injection is that it really helps with unit testing. And what I mean by that is it's a pretty common thing when using dependency injection to depend on interfaces rather than actual concrete objects. And what that actually allows us to do is that there's a lot of frameworks out there that allows you to actually mock objects. And what that means is essentially create a fake object that doesn't really do anything so you can actually unit test your specific class that you want to test. So if we go back to our example, you can see we have a service that depends on iDatabase. What I can do is actually mock out this iDatabase to actually not do anything, and then I can purely test my service. The second benefit I think of using dependency injection is it helps with your design. And what I mean by that is when you're using dependency injection, it's pretty common to start using interfaces. And that helps with your design as well. It makes you think about the single responsibility principle. So when I'm designing a class 
and I find myself having like database connections or something like that, I immediately think, hey, I should put this in its own class and maybe have an interface that, that my service depends on. So then I can easily mock it out and I can, and I have my separation of concerns. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.